Greetings students and welcome to my 10,000 subscriber Q&A video. Before I start answering questions, I'd like to thank all my patrons, my viewers, and my subscribers for supporting me ever since I started my channel two years ago. Your support, your comments, your feedback have all been immensely useful in creating my videos, so thank you. And now I'm ready to start answering some questions. There's a couple of questions that are actually requests for future videos, and I'll address those at the beginning. So Logan Collins has asked me if I do a video on the application of quantum mechanics to nanotechnology, and my response is sure, that's something I'll consider, although it's a pretty niche topic and I don't know if there's a lot of interest in it. I'll also need to get through my quantum mechanics series first before I get to the applications, but thank you for your request. The next request is by Anchor for real analysis, I'm assuming that's a request. And originally I was planning to have my real analysis videos out by last August, but other video series and I guess life got in the way so I wasn't able to get to it, but rest assured that I will start real analysis this summer. The next set of requests is by Ostensibly Querulous, who's asked for videos on classical dynamics and quantum mechanics. Now I've already started series on analytical mechanics and quantum mechanics, so yes, I will get to your videos when it's appropriate in my current series of lectures. They've also asked for videos in thermodynamics and electrodynamics. Those two are series that I'm planning to do later on, but not quite right now. Anyway, let's move on to some of my questions. 46 and Pi asks, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck took a course on complex analysis but didn't fully understand it. P.S. Your complex analysis series was actually utterly brilliant. Aw, thank you. To answer your question, the woodchuck would be able to chuck most of the wood, but because the woodchuck doesn't fully understand complex analysis, it wouldn't be able to handle the woody residue that remains. That's why I would recommend that the woodchuck watch some of my residue theorem videos so that in the future it would be able to chuck all of the wood. And in the future, I would recommend that everyone, including woodchucks, watch my series on complex analysis if they don't fully understand it from their classes. The next question comes from Cedric, who actually has two questions. The first one asks, who are you? Where have you studied? What have you studied? What about research? I mean, if you're asking that many questions, you might as well request a copy of my CV. But facetiousness aside, I'll answer your questions while trying not to reveal too much, lest I get an army of trolls storming my house. So, what have I studied? I've actually studied a pretty diverse range of subjects. My undergraduate degree was a Bachelor of Science in Physiology and Physics. That's where my math and physics knowledge comes from. Then I went on to graduate school and did a Master of Applied Science in Chemical Engineering, so basically a thesis-based Masters in Chemical Engineering, and that's where my knowledge of engineering, so like fluid mechanics and heat transfer, that's where all of that comes from. Currently, I'm in medical school getting an MD or Doctor of Medicine, and I finished year one of four. Now, what about research? Well, just like how the subjects I've studied are diverse, the research that I've done is also relatively diverse. I'm not going to list all the projects, but I've done research in biophysics, in applied mathematics, specifically using applied mathematics to model biological systems, in cell biology, in process control, and now in clinical epidemiology. So that's just an overview. The second question that Cedric asks is, when you hit 1 million subscribers or before that, will you make a video on the hardy ramanujan circle method? For those of you who don't know, the hardy ramanujan circle method is a technique used in analytical number theory. And number theory is something that I would like to do in the future, but perhaps not in the immediate future. So who knows, maybe I'll get to that video before I hit 1 million, if I do ever end up hitting 1 million. Moving on to the third comment, Matthias asks, How do you make your videos have such graphical quality? The writing is so smooth. I would like to start making videos in Portuguese for early graduates in Brazil. You are a big inspiration for me. Thank you, Mateus. I also got a similar question from Now Let's Roll It on Reddit, who asked me about the hardware slash software I use to make my videos. So I'll answer both of them. There's a bunch of things that I use. I have an Intuos tablet that I use to write stuff, and I write my lectures on a software called SmoothDraw, which is free. I also record and edit my videos using Camtasia, and you have to buy Camtasia. 
And for the audio, I have a microphone for recording and I use Audacity, which is a free software, for editing that audio. Next question is from Merrick Let's Play, who asks, what do you recommend to study when you like working on theoretical mathematics, but are also interested in the application of mathematics on problems in physics and engineering? Should I study pure math and then specialize later on in practical problems? Or is it better to rather start with studying physics or engineering immediately because there's a lot of math anyway? Now this later part in the question cuts off, but it says, P.S. Your explanations are well structured and helpful. Thanks for giving us this amazing content. First of all, thank you. I appreciate the kind words. And secondly, what would I recommend? Okay. So you say that you like theoretical math, but are also interested in applications. So my advice would be to go with your second option with studying engineering or physics, mainly because that gives you more career flexibility. And if you really do love pure math, then you could do a double major with math as your second major. You could also minor in math, or you could just take a bunch of spare courses in pure math. What I would recommend is taking courses in topics like real analysis or complex analysis, since they really give you a foundation if you want to study other pure math topics in the future. Hopefully that answers your question, but the real answer to your question is context dependent and I don't have the first hand information that you do to offer detailed and accurate advice. The next two questions are from Sean Bibby. His first question asks, what types of math are you not learned in but find interesting? So the most obvious answer for me personally is chaos theory. Chaos in math is the idea that the present can predict the future, but the approximate present does not approximately predict the future. Basically, even a minor deviation in the present, such as getting the current weather patterns wrong by even 0.1%, can result in a weather prediction a few weeks from now that's way off from what actually happens. And that's why weather predictions for individual days can become very inaccurate when you go far into the future because weather is like a chaotic system. Now I actually haven't learned chaos beyond getting a superficial understanding from difference equations and the Mandelbrot set, but chaos is a very interesting subject for me. In fact, for a long time I've been fantasizing about self-studying chaos and making videos on the Lorenz equations, which represent the classic example of chaos in a system of differential equations, but before I do that, I'll need to get through my initial nonlinear dynamics videos. Anyway, Sean's second question asks, Think of the subjects of math and physics which you've studied the most deeply. What are the books you wish you had read earlier in your studies? So one of the books that I wish I'd read earlier was Mathematical Methods in the Physical Sciences by Mary Boas. It covers a lot of advanced math concepts that I end up going over in my videos like complex variables, variational calculus, tensors, etc. And I wish I had it earlier because my undergraduate degree didn't really cover these concepts too well, and I feel like I would have had a more complete education if I had this book beforehand and I didn't have to self-study all this later on. The next couple of questions are from Xander, who asks, what made you want to make educational videos in the first place? And what other stuff are you into besides math, physics, etc.? So the first question, what made me want to start my channel? And there's two reasons. One is that I noticed there was a huge lag, and there still is, of well-explained, concise YouTube videos that taught graduate level and upper level undergraduate math and physics, and generally just upper level science topics. Since I'm fortunate enough to have a fairly diverse background, I thought, why not do something that benefits society by making these videos? The second reason is that as cheesy as it sounds, math and physics are part of my personality and I could not, in good conscience, abandon them. So I wanted some motivation to keep in touch and keep learning math and physics. This is especially true now that I'm in medicine where there's barely any math and physics. So part of the reason I made this channel was to give myself motivation to continue getting better at math and physics. As for the second question, what other stuff are you into besides math, physics, etc.? I'm assuming you're asking about my non-academic hobbies with that question. And it's nothing really special. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, helps me stay in touch with the community. I watch video game walkthroughs to get an idea of what games are worth playing. And that's pretty much it. Next up is a question from AS007DE who asks, Who are some of your favorite science communicators on YouTube? The first one that comes to mind is 3Blue1Brown. He's really good at providing intuition for math concepts that are otherwise pretty abstract. 
Another one is Vsauce, but I've only seen a couple of his videos because pop science in general just doesn't interest me. And now we come to our second last question from Pagswag. Currently reviewing advanced classical mechanics, what topics would you recommend I emphasize in my review? Will be a senior in college in fall. Okay, so first of all my answer won't be perfectly accurate because I don't know what courses you're going to be taking, but if I am to take a shotgun approach then I would say that you should absolutely know about the principle of stationary action and the Lagrange equations. You can watch one of my videos on that if you'd like. You also want to learn about forces in non-inertial reference frames, so Coriolis forces, centrifugal forces, etc. And you want to look over rotational mechanics and coupled oscillator systems, so like the double pendulum for example. These are the sort of high yield things that I'd recommend, but again I don't exactly know what courses you're taking. And finally our last question comes from Hanif Ibrahim. Do you or did you ever partake in math versus physics debates? And my answer to that is no, I didn't. In fact, I'm not even sure what you would argue in a math versus physics debate. So that should cover all my answers, but before I end, I'd like to make a short announcement slash survey. Now that I'm studying the medical sciences, I was thinking of doing a medical analysis of one of those doctor dramas like Chicago Med. They had a pretty interesting case in one of their episodes whose clip is out on YouTube, and since a couple of doctors are already out there on YouTube making reaction videos to medical dramas, I thought I'd join in on the action by doing a more in-depth analysis. So if you're interested in seeing medical analysis videos of popular medical dramas, let me know in the comments. Of course, if I do end up garnering interest in these videos, I'll still only make them once every couple of months, since I intend to make sure that the overwhelming majority of my videos are focused on math and physics tutorials. So I'll make the math and physics videos at the same rate, it's just that these medical analysis videos will be sprinkled on top, so you'll be getting more content. Anyway, that should conclude my Q&A video. Again, thank you to all my supporters for helping me get here. I'd also like to thank my patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've put links to my social media pages in the description, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.